beautiful prayer. We thank Brother Jeff Johns for leading us in a word of prayer. Uh, our Bible study uh, today, uh, I'm, I'm thankful to God. It's an honor to be before you all. And our uh, uh, study is uh, literally uh, entitled uh, Bible, I mean, Questions and Answers Concerning Christianity. Questions and answers concerning Christianity. And we're going to go directly to uh, 1 Peter chapter 3. And this will be the text that we have the right to do this. And we have talked about this and we've got quite a few questions here. We're thankful to God for them. And uh, if we don't answer them all, we will answer them at the uh, next appointed time. So again, 1 Peter chapter number 3. And this will be our text, verse 15 and 16. The Bible says, uh, But sanctify the Lord God in your heart, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you, with meekness and in fear, having a good conscience, that whereas they speak evil of you, as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. So thereby this has shown us that we have an authority to answer questions and we should answer questions. So now we, we, we thank God for the person who uh, put out the little slips of paper for us to be able to jot our questions on. And we've got some questions here, several. And we're going to read this out carefully. Uh, Jesus who teaches in Matthew 6, 5 through 15. And we're going to turn that so we can get to understand what they're saying. Uh, on that question, on how to pray to God our Father, and who not to be like in Matthew 6, 5, and Matthew 6 and 7. When we do pray, why is this expressed even in a church as the sinner's prayer? As if it belongs to sinners only, and for those who constantly, I guess, sin. To use only as if it is for them only. We all are sinners, even those in Matthew 6, 5 and 6, 7. While the label of sinners prayer and not as the great example of how to pray to God is taught by Jesus to be repeated in spirit and in truth from the one praying. We use this all the time personally and together the example of prayer we have our own prayers to that we add to this before or after saying Jesus example of prayer for what to ask for and how to pray question when did the label oh forgive me where did the label come from sinner's prayer is it in the Bible beautiful statements uh, we're going to look at all the statements made uh, we're going to look at Matthew 6. And we're going to read that so we can uh, understand, have the, the, the person who asked the question understand it. Matthew 6 and 5. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corner of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Truly I say unto you, they have their reward. Matthew 6, 6. But thou... When thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father which is in secret. And thy father which seeth in secret shall reward the opening. Verse 7. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathens do. For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Verse 8. Be not ye therefore like unto them. For your father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask them. Verse 9. After this manner therefore pray ye. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And if you forgive men their trespasses, the heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, Neither will your father forgive your trespass. Now verse 15. They also mention uh, a, a, a re review of 6 and 5. An emphasis. And the statement is uh, when you, you do pray. Uh, as expressed in the church is the sinner's prayer. Now I, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, 
I don't know of a sinner spread that a person can pray and it's just for them. Uh, so someone may be sent in a church, but uh, I hope no one among our number and other church of Christ that walk up right are all, all around the world are saying that. Because the men who are saying that he's teaching is are his separated disciples. So he loves them. He considers them followers of him, especially those who um, are the apostles. That particular group. So uh, I don't think this can be labeled a sinner's prayer, and it shouldn't be. I understand people talk about the part concerning thy kingdom come, but you can't discredit the whole prayer because it says thy kingdom come because the kingdom has not yet come to earth. But the idea is the individual uh, doesn't have to say that part and continue to talk to God if he wants to say this prayer. Uh, it, it's not a evil prayer. It's a prayer that Christ taught the disciples. And so uh, someone may be labeling this a sinner's prayer because of thy kingdom come. But you couldn't pray that today as a lost soul. Like when I was a Catholic, I couldn't pray thy kingdom come. The kingdom was already here. So even it would be incorrect for me to say thy kingdom come. You know, and so the idea is that uh, so no one should label that. But I'm not going to deny the person's question that's questioning, bringing this far that there are, there are some saints that may say, well, this is a sinner's prayer. But there is no prayer a sinner can pray to bring himself into the light of spirituality and be saved. There is no prayer. And this is definitely not it uh, because it isn't given to law. These, these, these people. Uh, with the Lord, these times that they're asking him about, they're seeking salvation. So, and, and, and his disciples are who he's talking to. So they, they're lost in that they have to be given the Spirit in that aspect. But they have come to Christ, so they're not rejecting him. So they're not lost like that. And so the idea is they have come to the Lord. They're seeking and they believe him. They're not like Nicodemus questioning him and uh, the other Pharisees and other people like that. They're not like those guys. So he isn't saying this because he's a bunch of evil beasts like that. And so I do want to uh, point out one thing though that is in the question uh, concerning we're all sinners. Now I want to make sure that we comprehend we were sinners. But we are not now because we are washed. See, and that's the key. Remember, we are washed, sanctified. Now, let's get a couple of scriptures in here to uh, uh, validate that. Let's go, if we will, 1 Corinthians 6. Before you go any further. Okay. No, 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 no. I don't have a comment. Okay. Was there several questions in that question? Uh, yes, that's what I want to address. Yeah, it's like it has several statements, first, right. Did, did you just address the first one? Yeah, we addressed, uh, this is not a sinner's prayer. So anyone calling this a prayer dedicated for sinners, that's incorrect because we just showed who Jesus was talking to. Uh, I'm saying, I don't know of anyone, I hope no one's here teaching that. Uh, so the person is asking, is this a sinner's prayer? Yeah. Yeah, and it's not, and they, they also have heard someone say this is a sinner's prayer, and I'm discrediting that. This is not a sinner's prayer. Not a prayer for someone who's lost. A saint can pray this, and he's giving it. So remember, Jews are separated. They are saints. And, and those that came to Christ, they're listening. They're his disciples. So he's not considering them castaways like the Pharisees that are rejecting him and were scoffing at him. So that's not the case. So anyone labeling this, a sinner's prayer and you can't pray because the word kingdom comes and now that's not correct. You can't, can't say that. The person could be saying the kingdom of heaven coming if, if, if they had that in their mind. You'll say, well, they weren't saying that in that context. But if he has that in his mind, he can even say the kingdom come because he's talking about when heaven comes. Because that's what Jesus referred to as his kingdom that he will bring us to, which is in heaven. We're not going to stay down here on earth like the witnesses teach. That's a lie. Jehovah's Witness, that's a lie. So we've addressed this is not a sinner's prayer. It cannot be prayed to be saved. So somebody said, well, I'll pray to sin. No, it cannot be prayed to be saved. And it cannot be discredited. It is a valid holy prayer. Uh, the kingdom comes, speaking of when he would bring his kingdom. Uh, so these words are not vile. And they are not for loss. Because these individuals he's telling it to. They have God as their father. A lost brother, God isn't his father. That isn't his fault. He's worshiping Bacchus or he's worshiping Diana or something. So he 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 isn't uh this this group here loves the Lord and he's telling them how to pray. So so that's not accurate. If someone's bashing this prayer like that, 
And saints have to be careful because we can become, we can wield a sword and cut up some innocent people. I'm just saying, you know, uh, we can cut up innocent people. You shouldn't say that prayer. I mean, my goodness, man, you know, hold up, you know. What are we talking against the Lord in the prayer? See, that becomes legalistic. The kingdom's already here, but it doesn't ruin the, the other words are still very accurate and very holy and very proper. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we, we put people in a box, man, they're scared to say something about the Bible like it's going to destroy their souls. And so finally, a statement is made also in here where all sinners, I want to clarify and make sure because I read that, I want to put a handle on that. We have sin, but if you're a sinner now, you're lost. And let's look at 1 Corinthians 6. If you're a sinner now, you're definitely lost. Your soul is in, in, cursed. Verse 9, 1 Corinthians 6, 9. Know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That would be sinners. Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. Here's the difference. But you are washed. Now, not just was, but you're sanctified. Amen. Not just sanctified, but you're justified. And this is while they're on the earth. In the name of the Lord Jesus, by being in His character, by having His authority to make those statements that you're saved, and by the Spirit of our God. So, brethren, don't look at yourself as a sinner. Here's a valid, another uh, validation in 1 Peter 4.18. I understand the thought that we... We're sinners. But we cannot be sinners today and make it to heaven. There'll be no sinners in heaven. None. And First Peter chapter 4. But I understand the, the person writing the question uh, may be making reference to we have sin. And we may be in sin when we go to God and pray asking for forgiveness. I acknowledge and understand that. But we're not sinners. And here's the validation. And I want to show you what the word sinners mean. G268. Sinful that is sinner. Sinful sinner. That's a bad rascal. Yeah. That's a bad rascal. G two six eight. So you don't want to be that. So let's look at First Peter four and eighteen. Okay, the scripture says. Uh, let's go up a little bit. Let's get verse seventeen. For the time has come that judgment must appear at the house of God. I must begin. Forgive me. Okay, so that means now that's that's the church, and it first begin at us. What shall the end of be of them that obey not the gospel of God. So now that's a group that doesn't obey the gospel. Verse 18. And if the righteous scarcely be saved. And that's the right ones. Where shall his two bad groups. The ungodly and the sinner appear. So you got an ungodly. He don't, don't run with God or nothing. He got a, one of those saints so called. That practice sin. A sinful sinner. Now you don't want to be that type of saint brother. You want to be a saint walking in sin. You got ungodly. And you got a sinner. So they definitely not going to be in the number. The righteous going to bound to make it in. Why? Because mercy. God already know what we did. He know when we did it. He know when we did it after baptism. He know when we did it just before we died. Whatever we did and sought forgiveness for. I said, if I don't give you mercy, you won't get in. So I want to make sure we get our minds away that we are not sinners. And God forbid that we should be ungodly. And from what I've read, this is uh, this should have addressed uh, the issue. If, if, if I read this question and you're here, and uh, you know who wrote it, and you want me to clarify more through uh, the recording, don't, don't be afraid about saying, hey, I need some clarification. If it's your question, we just wanted it written and handed in. You know, it isn't like you can't identify this as you, because there's no such thing as a question. When you're trying to be saved, that's wrong. Okay. Well, could you? I, I just want you to read this again because you move a little fast. Yeah. Okay. You move it fast, and I'm not. Okay, let's read it again. Jesus teaches in Matthew six five fifteen on how to pray to God our Father, and who not to be like in Matthew six five and six seven. That's the ones with vain repetition. So that's why we read those verses. Six five, we read, and we read six seven. If, if you'd like, I can read it again. So there's no problem with it. Let's read it again. 6 5. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as a hypocrite. For they love to pray standing in the synagogue in the corner of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Truly I say unto you, they are their rewards. So Hannah wasn't a hypocrite, but she was praying out openly. And Eli saw her. So just because you're praying out openly don't mean you're a hypocrite. But he says, this group wants to be seen. So Christ validates. He said, that's a hypocrite. Now, verse 7. But when you pray, use not vain repetition, as the heathens do. 
for they think that they may be heard for them must speak. You have a heathen who's praying to a false god, by repetition, and you got a heathen who's praying to God using repeat. The Catholics do that. Uh, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for the all about that. I know I used to pray. You go to confession, they tell you pray three Hail Marys, five our fathers. I mean, repeat it three times, five times. You go to Catholic funeral, they're going to repeat it all day. Whether you like it or not, you can get up and leave, they're going to tell you bye because they're going to repeat it. They're going to go through that whole road. Every one of them beads, you get there early enough, and then hit that last and they're done. So that's vain repetition, repeat the same thing. That is not what Jesus did. He prayed three times the same prayer. Vain repetition is to repeat, continue. Holy Mary, Holy Mark, Father, then, then I stop. Once again, Jesus got up, looked at the disciples, spoke to them, wake up, you know, can't you watch me all? Regrouped himself and went back and prayed again. It's not vain repetition. That is not vain repetition. The Lord tells us to continually knock. Continue, continue. So you got to come back and ask him again. Come back and ask him again. But that's not vain repetition. That's not the meaning of the word repetition. It will be continually for you when you finish, right again and again. So now that's that part. Now the rest of the question says this. Uh, that why is this expressed even in the church as a sinner's prayer? And that's why we address that. I said if someone's doing that, that's incorrect. So this person has obviously heard someone do that. As if it belongs to the sinner only and for those who constantly, I guess, sin. To use only for them only. We are all sinners and we address that. I don't know what context they meant. They may not have meant uh, sinners like the word means. They may have meant have sin or when we sin, we will be going to God to ask for prayer when we sin. So they may have meant that. But I want to make sure those who are listening know we're not sinners like that word means. They're not ungodly. Why the label of sinner prayer is not a great example of how to pray to God. And I agree with that. It is a great example of how to pray to God. As taught by Jesus to be repeated in the spirit. And truth from the one praying. We address that. We use this all the time personally and together. The example of prayer. That is fact. We have our prayers. To that we add to this. Before or after. Saying Jesus. I uh, understand what I mean. Jesus name. Prayers for what to ask for. So. Statements made. Final question. Summed up. Where did the label come from? Sinner's prayer. I have no idea, and no, it is not in the Bible. So we we'll address those when we read the scriptures. Now, remember, saints, this is recorded. Uh, I, I know Brother Fritz will upload it. So you know, uh, if something wasn't clear, you can go back and listen. If you feel it wasn't addressed correctly, give me a call because I am the one speaking. Someone else in the audience may say something, though. So you know, you, you, if they give an answer, they may clarify it for you better. So you might want. Calling them too. I believe Sister Carl. I didn't see no other hands. I saw Sister Carl. So uh, Sister Paul did with the. No, I just I was cool. Yeah. Okay. My thoughts are moving now. You, amen. I did. I, I did read over. God bless you. Thank you for that. I did read over. Uh, amen. Thank you. I only wanted to read uh, Romans from Romans eight. Just read the scriptures. <laughs> Romans eight, starting at verse fourteen. Romans eight and fourteen. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Mm -hmm. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Mm -hmm. We are no longer considered sinners. Amen. Amen. Uh, well the Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs of Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be glorified, be also glorified together. And I want to drop down to uh, verse 22. It says, For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even as we ourselves groan with our, within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. Amen. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope, for what a man seeth, why does he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Mm -hmm. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. 
for we know not what we should pray for as we ought yes. but the spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered mm -hmm. and he that searcheth the hearts know what is the mind of the spirit because he made maketh intercession for the saints yes. according to the will of God ah. and you must be a Christian God bless you. Beautiful reading. And Saint uh, Sister Paul said, if, if anybody, myself and one, has gone over something and went over it a little too quick, ask for the repeat. And also remember, I am not the Bible answer man. So Sister Carl has given a Bible answer as well that addresses this. And anyone else? Well, because I, I don't claim no all the answers. I know they are in the Bible, but I'm only give so many. Okay, thank you, Sister Carl. God bless you. Well said, what Brother the, King. What was the question? Uh, basically, uh, hold on. basically, the question deals with why why is uh, Matthew six the area of the proud father labeled the sinner's prayer? Someone has obviously labeled that to the person who asked the question, and they're discrediting and they're right. Not the sinner's prayer. And uh, also, a statement was made in there where all sinners. Like I said, I don't know what capacity that question is placed in. They may mean sinners when you're coming for the law to ask forgiveness. Right, right. But we want to clarify we're not sinners anymore. So the God's given an excellent answer uh, on that. Because the saints mean separated ones. So we're separated from sin. Okay. Okay. That's your answer. Oh, is it? Okay. All right, my brother. You have me show? Like okay, thank you. Just you. God bless you. God uh, bless you, brother. Amen. Amen. Look around around here looking like Elvis Preston, huh? Without his money. Without his money. Hey. <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> does anybody else does anybody else wanna uh does anybody else have a thought on that particular question? Praise God. Okay. Now here's another. Wow, this is beautiful. Man, a lot of words. This is beautiful. Good clarity. It is said that Adam and Eve were put out of the Garden of Eden because of sin. Uh <clears throat> I'm not quite there yet. This is the only reason. Yes, God told them their punishment for disobeying Him and what they would have to do in Genesis 3, 8 through 21. And God told the serpent its punishment. To my thinking, this could have been done in the Garden of Eden instead of God providing everything for them they would have to do for themselves. What I need in Genesis 3.22 that God removed man from the garden to prevent this and did what is written in Genesis 3.23-24. He was not going to remove the tree of life which they didn't take from but God removed man and woman protecting or shielding the garden from them. Sin uh Yes, led man to be punished. But sin was not the only reason a reason they were removed, as often said. That's my question. Okay, now we're going to go to Genesis. You know, this is beautiful how statements can be made. This is how, this is how, and I, I remember saying this morning, thank God. This is how brethren should talk. We should talk. You know, yeah, I know you're going to have sharp disputes like Paul and Barnabas. I understand that. But we should talk. We should look at the thought. Nobody should be telling lies, playing with the word. You know, you know what I mean? You should have good conversation. You're not going to be agreeable. You may have to have a couple, two or three visits on the subject. But this is how it should be. The person makes a statement. When you look at it, you go and read the text and see what it's saying. Just in case you missed something, in case something's wrong. And this is what my prayer for all of us as we're talking to people, uh, including those that are lost. And once they show themselves as heathens, then we, of course, pull out the sword and discredit sharply what they've said. But there's a time you rebuke sharply. But I mean, it has to get to that point. So this is how the conversation should flow. Thank God. Okay, Genesis 3, 8. Let's look at that. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. So we just don't want to talk about it not read. Some people say, like, oh, let's save time. Well, we, we want to talk about it later. All of us not going to die. There'll be more of us here tomorrow. I might not be here, but somebody else will be here. His other brother's going to answer this better than me. Sisters can deal with it. But you know, we don't want to just rush through. We want to see what the person has a question. What is the text that they're looking at? Okay, it says, God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam, his wife, hid themselves from the presence of the Lord amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree? 
12, I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat. And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. I always laugh when I read that. My goodness. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman he said, uh, uh, well upon it we know that's Christ, because that's the statement is made, because Jesus kills the devil. You kick a man in the head, you kill him. But it's going to bruise your heel. Jesus was killed, resurrected again. He felt pain, he felt sorrow. That's a bruise, but he lives forever. Satan is dead. Why? Because he has no more power. Hebrews says he doesn't even have power over death anymore. That's why you've got to be smart, brethren. Satan can't touch you. It's if you like what he got. And you go in his house. You go in his yard. That's when he gets you. He's powerless. But he can talk across the fence. Don't you want this over here? And that's what you got to watch. So, we understand this is about Christ. Thy seed. Not seed as of many. Thy seed. Because this Christ is Eve's seed. She's the mother of all living, brethren. She's the mother of all living. Last man born going to be Eve's seed. Because they, that's what it's called. The, the woman after the woman after. The woman after and the woman after. That's how it's going to be felt. Okay. Or oh, else yeah, talking about the next boy she has. Show not able. Cain. Neither one of them. You know. Okay. Yeah. Amen. Until the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow, and thy conception and sorrow. Shalt thou bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam, he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree which I commanded thee, thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shalt thou eat of it all thy days of thy life. Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herbs of the field. And as well as thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return to the ground, for all of it was thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. That is. Unto Adam also, and to his wife, did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. So now we have a point here. This is the story, but it says, What I read in Genesis 3.22. Let's look at that. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand, and take also of the tree of life, eat, and live forever. God doesn't want him to do that. Right. And that's the statement. That's what he's saying. He's like us. You don't touch this tree and live forever. Mm -mm. You don't get that right. There's another way you're going to get to live forever. You could have ate the tree. Could have been living like that. But now you have another way. And that is through the obedience of Almighty God's instructions and the asking of mercy when they're violated. It's the only way you're going to live forever, brethren. In this dispensation that they're about to enter into, and the dispensation of Moses and the Christian dispensation, that's instruction. You have to follow. When you violate them, you have to ask for forgiveness, and you must repent. And that's only if you are a child of God. Is that even allowed? Mercy unto the saints. You're washed. Sanctified, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. Okay, so now it says here, God removed man from the garden to prevent this and did what is written in Genesis 3, 23. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden. That's, what, that's the text, right? Sent him from. If I send you from this room, you got to leave. See, because sent means to go. From where? Where did you go from the room? So you'd have to leave. Till the ground, uh, he says, uh, sent him from the garden. Now listen what he says. For from the garden of Eden. To till the ground from whence he was taken. So he's out of the garden of Eden. That's where the tree is. He's not going to get it. Now watch how he protects it. So he drove out the man. Now that's it. Now that's pretty specific. And he placed at the east of the garden of Eden. Cherubims. And a flaming sword. It's trying to weigh every to keep the way of the tree of life. Now, brethren, from that text, that garden is... I, I, Bob, when you say this, so buckle up, brethren, because somebody might get excited. The garden is still on the earth. Never said he removed it. He says there's cherubims there, angelic hosts, who protected with a 
fiery flaming type sword. So it tells us exactly what rivers came out. It's in the area, general area, but no, you can search all day. You're never going to find it because every time the chairman's going to jump out with a sword, ah, get away. When you walk near it, your mind goes, oh, I don't think it's over there. You go this way. See, it turns you away. God is proper. They saw Jesus, the two going to Emmaus, and didn't know who he was. Right. Now, we've been eating and been with this man since the beginning. And we don't know who he is till he breaks the bread and then he disappears and says, Well, did the heart break? Yeah, well, you didn't recognize him because God says he wouldn't let them. Mary at the tomb didn't. She thought he was a gardener. Mary, she thought he was a gardener. She said, Well, you took him so I can get him. Then he, she turned again and said, Mary, she said, Rabon. Okay, why? Why am I not you saying? Because you don't believe he resurrected. So a lot of time, I'm hold you back, and brother, that's how we are. <clears throat> if we don't believe something, guess what? You get held back a little bit, and if you act right, you see your heart. That's right. So then he'll let you see it. Yeah. So let's grab it when you first see it. Be like the Bereans. Let's read this in the book. Believe it. Receive it like a Thessalonians, like as a word of God. Take it, brethren, and run with it. Yeah. Don't hold up your blessing. Don't hold up your the furthering of your understanding. Because when you hold back. He going to block you a little bit so he can give you some work, which I don't know why he's blocking. I don't know what he do because I'm not in. And I'm not fixing to start guessing. Maybe he does. I'm not in the guessing bit. I punched out of that a few years ago. I'm done. No more guessing. All I know that's what he said. He wouldn't let them see. And he won't let us see. He wouldn't let the Jews see. Now the spirit of summer because they were smart mobs. We know. We see. I'm going to show you. He going to tell it. Though a man tell you. He said in all testament. You're not going to get it. Because they were evil. And so we understand that. So now, if I'm making sure I'm getting this statement right, there's a statement at the end. Hold your thought, Brother Keith. He was not going to remove the tree of life, as they didn't take from, but God commanded man and woman, protecting them as children from them. Sin, yes, led man to be punished. But sin was not the only reason or reasons they were removed, as often said. That is my question. Well, we vowed that it was definitely put out of the garden. And it was because of sin. So, no, so we've, we've read that, right? Uh, and that's the key. And that's how you answer the question. The most we can do is read it. And it says it. Because you what? You, you ate of the tree, listened to the serpent. And he said something different to Adam. You ate the tree, listened to your wife. I, and we don't need to beat up no sisters or motherhood or women. Because any woman would have did it, any man would have did it. He just couldn't get at them directly. But he got them through the woman. The woman is not God either. That's why I call so I'm not taking that lame story about the woman you gave me. So what? You still don't have to worry. It's going to be even tougher. You're sweating, thorns, and thistles. It's going to be popping up on you. And we need to understand God's not playing with that. I want to hear nothing about it. I know I gave you a woman. You have to remind me. I made you and her. You can't blame her because I told you. Say, but since you listen to her, the point, brethren, we gotta learn. You can't blame your wife. Can't blame your husband. See, but he's a head off. Can't blame your husband. He won't teach the truth. Can't blame your husband. Brother Keith. Amen. Amen. Yes. Uh, that's good. I'm following. I'm following along. At the same time, I got a question and I got, and I got an answer. <laughs> Amen. Uh, he, uh, amen. That's the best kind. Boy, we don't have to wrestle with because this thing is about prayer. And you know, oftentimes you see so many people praying. And they're praying, and, and most of them are not even members of the church. Amen. Because, you know, the Bible does say, and it's plain, it's, that God hears not the prayers of a sinner. Mm -hmm. You know, so so therefore, you know, our, I guess our task is to make them understand why he does it. Why he does it. It's because of sin. Yes. So a sinner has to be convinced that he is sin. The ways of sin is death. He is, he's in sin. He <coughs> continues in sin. That's right. And so, uh, Amen. Um, for us as Christians, to understand that our yeah, our prayers can be hindered because if, if we put our place to ourselves in the place of Adam and Eve, their prayers were hindered because of what they did. Yes. My my example is from uh from Isaiah fourteen. I mean Isaiah one and fourteen. Uh it says, It's your new moons and your appointed feast, my soul hateth. They are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. Now he told he's the one who gave the feast. Mm -hmm. Why would God be telling you, I don't want them no more? Because of your sin because your evil and wicked ways you decide not to put them away from you you decide to continue in them that's, that's right. what he's talking to Israel about right that's right so 15 he says 
It's Isaiah 1 and 15. He says, And when you spread forth your hands, I will hide my eyes. He says, From you. Yea, when you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. And so, as Christians, now you can read, you can read the rest of it because he just tells, he just goes on and on and tells us why, because God wants, he wants us to know why we're in sin. So we can't get so, as Christians, we can't get to the point where we think we can do anything and still be in the presence of God. Amen. Because the Bible says when a person go lays with a harlot. I think it's in uh, 1 Corinthians 6. Mm -hmm. He becomes one with her. Yes, he does. He becomes one with the harlot. Mm -hmm. so, def so therefore, you know, we can't we can't put away sin because when we do pray and we see in God, he hates that. Amen. He hates that. So we have to make sure we put away sin from us, whatever the case might be. It's not worth it. That's right. It's not worth it. If we die in our sins, we're going to be begging for mercy. That's right. In hell with flaming fire, you know. That's not a comfortable position to be in at all. Amen. And so I think about that often for myself. Amen. For myself personally, is that I can't stand flames. I can't stand for my finger to get burnt. For my whole body to be flaming forever and ever and then get tossed in the bottom of the pit and just falling and burning. Mm. It's a pitiful it's a pitiful thing to do. A be a place to be for, for all of us. So, you know, we have to make we have to make sure that we try to look in the mirror every day to kind of correct what it is, whatever it is that we have with ourselves and with others. Amen. Yeah. Good job, brother. Yeah. God bless you. Man, that's, that's beautiful. Brethren, let's go back and look at these things too. Brother Hamilton, and I don't know if anybody has Sister Lois next. Okay. Just going back to the second question we had, and just kind of giving, uh, I guess, just clarification or extra clarification or whatever. Because uh, I, could, I could see how a person maybe could like misunderstand or somebody could try to twist it or like take it too far or stretch the scripture whatever the case may be mm -hmm. but he talks about in verse uh, genesis 3 and 22 says in the lord which genesis, genesis 3, 3 and 22 yeah okay. says the lord god said behold the man has become as one of us to know good and evil and now as he put forth his hand and take also the tree of life and eat and live uh, forever mm -hmm. uh it says therefore the lord sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken and a person said, look at that and say, well, it was because of sin that he was taken out. Mm -hmm. It was because God didn't want him to eat from, eat from the tree. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I think that was, if I was listening to the question correct, that was right. kind of where they were going. Like, uh, it wasn't because of sin. Mm -hmm. It was for some other reason, which is, well, we don't want to eat the tree. So for that reason, he has to go. Not because of the sin, but because you don't want to eat the tree. But as you uh, answer correctly... The reason why you can't eat the tree is because you know good and evil. That's right. Yeah. The reason you know good, our good and evil is because yeah. you ate from the tree that was in the middle of God, which I told you right. not to. Yeah. Right. So that's the reason why you have to go. And it's, right. it's the sin. That's right. You know what I mean? So I just good job, man. God bless. Thank you, brother. And that's what it's about, brother. Clarification, uh, going into other verses and emphasizing to emphasize a verse to stress the verse. Key words and now that's how we get it because we want to make sure. See, it sends a resounding message to us. We got sin. We're not going to eat a tree like uh, Paul said in Romans. But we sin like Adam something. Yeah. And that's our problem. We don't want to do that. Well, Sister Lord, thank you, Dwayne. And you know, I was thinking about that um, that passage. You know, sin is a transgression of God's law. Amen. Yes. And, and it's just uh, so that's easy to, to think about. You know, if God has said to do something mm -hmm. and you do opposite that, mm -hmm. it's so easy to realize you sin. That's right. We do it even sometimes we don't even realize it, but you can you can commit a sin and then you think about something later and you go, you know, I, I shouldn't have done that. Right. Yep. Or I shouldn't have yeah. I shouldn't have said that. And then you're reading in the scriptures and say you're convicted by sin is a transgression of God's law. Mm -hmm. And you go, oh, he said, don't do that. And I did it. That makes me a sinner. Right. So even in the garden, he said what to eat of, That's what right. not to eat of. Amen. So if you right. ate of the thing he said not to eat of, then you're in sin. That's right. So sin was the reason for why they got kicked out of the garden because he told them. That's right. Because you've eaten of the tree. So, I don't know, sometimes our reasoning, sometimes as human beings, we, we try to overthink a thing. Mm -hmm. I've learned sometimes, I've done it myself, you try to overthink a thing. It's like, girl, just, just read what it say and just leave it alone. Amen. And just keep asking God, you know, to open your eyes and your understanding right. so that you can, you know, you can be right in God's sight when it comes to knowing what the scriptures do say about, you know, his word. 
That's right. That's a good point. And, that, and that's some good advice in there from, from our sister. Remember, because uh, you can't go beyond what's written. Yeah. And see that, and that, that you overthink your thing, you know, you want, uh, so, you know, sometimes people say, let's take this deep. Well, we can go too deep and drown ourselves, you know. Yeah. So I'm keeping up with everybody. I, it's Sister Carr, and I saw <laughs> Sister Paul, and then Brother Jim. Okay. I just wanted to speak to when you were saying that about how that, uh, uh, that part of the garden still exists. Mm -hmm. And you said it, it still exists and it, uh, that there is an angel that turns us, you, you may, the analogy is in, you may be going close to it, but it's something will turn you <laughs> yeah, away. Right. We can't see with the naked eye. That's right. And you know, when you say that, I thought about this immediately came to me in Numbers uh, mm -hmm. 22 and 20. Okay, and you all know where I'm going about uh, Balaam. Uh, Balaam and the donkey. Oh my. <laughs> uh -huh. Numbers 22 and 20. Mm -hmm. It said, And God came unto Balaam at night and said unto him, If the men come to call thee, rise up and go with them. But yet the word which I shall say unto thee, that thou shalt do. Mm -hmm. And Balaam rose up in the morning and saddled his ass and went with the princes of Moab. Mm -hmm. And God's anger was kindled because he went. And the angel of the Lord stood in the way mm -hmm. for an adversary against him. Mm -hmm. Now he was riding up on his ass and his two servants were with him. So um, I'm, I'm just going to kind of skip over. And, the, and I saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way and his sword drawn in his hand mm -hmm. and his ass turned aside out of the way and went into the field mm -hmm. and Balaam smote him he hit him to turn her in the way but the angel of the Lord stood in a path of the vineyards a wall being on his side and a wall on that side mm -hmm. and when the I saw the angel of the Lord she thrust herself into the wall and crushed Balaam's foot mm -hmm. against the wall and he smote her again and we're going to find out where He's going to, the angel is still standing there, and he's going to continue to hit uh, the donkey. Mm -hmm. But in verse 22 and 27, it said, And when I saw the angel of the Lord, she fell down under Balaam, and Balaam's anger was kindled, and he smote him again with the staff. Mm -hmm. See, he couldn't see mm -hmm. that angel of the Lord, mm -hmm. but the donkey saw. Wow. And then here was a miraculous thing. Mm -hmm. And then the Lord opened the mouth of ass, mm. and she said unto Balaam, What have I done thee that thou hast smitten me three times? Mm. Oh, and Balaam true. said unto the ass, Because thou hast mocked me, I would that was sword in my hand, for now I would kill thee. <laughs> and, he, and he went on to, when, I'm, I'm going to go for time's sake, go on to uh, verse 32, 20, Numbers 22 and 32. Mm -hmm. and, and the angel of the Lord said unto him, Wherefore hast thou smitten thine eyes three times? Mm -hmm. Behold, I went out to withstand thee, because of thy way is perverse before me. Mm -hmm. And the eyes saw me and turned from me these three times, unless she had turned from me. Surely now also I had slain thee mm. and saved her alive. Oh and it made me think mm. of when you were saying that the, the garden, it still exists. Yes. But there is an angel there. We will never be able to find it. Man mm -hmm. will not never. be able to. Never. Uh, nor do we need to Amen. because there is an angel that is there mm -hmm. and you know uh, the Bible that's what the beauty of the Old Testament is for our learning so we can see when you continue to do you're kicking against the pricks yes. you know I, I think about with Paul you're kicking against the pricks but mm -hmm. the thing about it is uh, I think about save yourself this untoward generation. Amen. Well said. Boy, this is good. Boy, that's a story there. Yes, My yes. goodness. But to save the donkey alive, the ass alive, and kill him. Yes. Boy, that's powerful. Oh, yes, sis. Thank you, sister. I want to revisit something you said earlier about mm -hmm. uh, about uh, Adam and, and uh, Eve when uh, um, they were passing out the blame cards. Mm -hmm. And Adam uh, tried to blame Eve. And God gave him his punishment anyway. Yes. You know, uh, I told you directly what not to do. <laughs> but you listened to her and yeah. did it anyway. Right. And it made me think of Abraham and Sarah. Okay. When Sarah, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. when Sarah uh, got hot mad at Hagar, mm -hmm. you know, for the things that was taking place. Mm -hmm. And then after casting, the, casting out the son and Hagar, you know, Abraham was grieved because of what was going on. But Sarah turned around and put it back on him, mm -hmm. you know. Although I did it, <laughs> but it's your sin. Mm -hmm. 
You know, this happens because yeah. you, 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 the, you, you, the, you, the leader of this house. Right. You know, I can come to you with all kinds of, of, of ideas, mm. but if you jump on my idea when you know it ain't the right idea, the scene, the scene is on you. That's and right. you know, and that's pretty much what God is telling, uh, was telling, uh, um, Adam at the time, mm -hmm. you know, I told y'all what not to do. I mm -hmm. told you don't, you know, d d eat all you can want, all you want, but don't mm -hmm. don't do nothing with yeah. this. Right. But you allowed her to go ahead and eat it, and not only did she eat it, she offered it to you, and you took it. And now you want to put blame on her, and God is saying, no, we're gonna turn this right back where it was in the That's first right. place. That's and the same thing He was doing with uh, with uh, Abraham and Sarah. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I'm not saying that 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 that. You should you you brother should not um, and then it's not to any brother in a sense, but in Abraham's case, don't try to blame the wife when yes. you're the head. That's right. right. You know, uh, yes, yeah, she may do some things, but you still the head. Mm -hmm. That does not take you out of your your position right. as head. Right. So, because because you know, God is looking to you, right. Christ, man, then woman, mm -hmm. and that's His order, and mm -hmm. it's gonna always be that Amen. way. And, and that's the. That I just wanted to address that when you put that out there, as far as um, Ad, uh, Adam and Eve and him trying to throw blame. So be careful as to throw blame. My wife said, my wife did. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you still need to take a look at where you 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 hold fast into the in, in, in your uh, in your role. That's right. Well said. Amen. That's that's the truth. And you know, I'm gonna bring this to Brother John's. Thank you, Sister Paul. We have to understand is that um, we. Hear people say all the time, which is a valid point. Listen to your wife, well, listen to your husband too. But mm -hmm. that part is pretty hot, put a handle on them when they write. Yeah. If they can validate their point. Now, physical things, they might be writing, you might can't validate. Yeah. But when it comes to spiritual, it, it needs to be validated. Exactly. Amen. Yeah, yeah but see, that took the word of my wife. I was looking at it. I, I always had looked at that, at that point. That was her, he says, because yes. you hearken to your wife exactly. mm -hmm. yes. in this world. Mm -hmm. It might not be our wives. We have a lot of voices that we hear. That's right. If it didn't come from the book, yeah. that's it. we don't listen to it. Amen. You have, you have, we have voices say, well, you ain't got to take the Lord's help but once a month. Mm. Them voices, yeah. did it come from here? Right. We don't listen to it. Right. Just like Adam, he got in trouble for listening to his wife. That's right. That's right. His wife ate it, wherever, mm. and it happened. But, and it says, it clearly, the Bible clearly says that, she, that he was dressed there with her. Watched her take it from him. Watched her grab it. And didn't say nothing. The scripture says that she, she took and gave to her husband. Well, with, and it says, what, what, which was with her. So that means he was right there. Watching her take, take, this, take, take it from the trees. Knowing God said, you know what? Do not eat. Mm, do not eat. Of that tree mm -hmm. in the middle of the garden. Mm -hmm. Can you believe, you know what? So what's, what's so amazing about that? I'm like, out of all the trees, <laughs> out of all the trees, mm -hmm. the tree of life was in the garden too. Why you eat? Why you eat it that way? <laughs> why you eat it that way? <laughs> Listen to your wife. Mm -hmm. The women, they, I must say. I ain't say don't listen to your wife. That's right. I ain't saying that. Because nah. most time my wife's hell. Yeah. The, the better idea. Yeah. You know right. what I'm saying? That's right. Really. That's right. But if it goes against this right here, exactly. that's a difference. That's a difference. Right. No, I ain't, baby. I, baby, I love you, but I just can't agree with you on that. <laughs> we ain't going that way. Then take them back to Adam. Yeah. See, Adam made a big mistake, and God said, "Y'all need to learn from Adam." You. You listen to voices. Of, I mean, your, your job, your friends, and girl, man, man, do this, do that. God didn't say it. That's right. Yeah, right. Amen. That's, That's right. why as Christians we supposed to. He said, if anybody speaks, let us speak the heart of God. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Amen. That's good. Amen. Amen. And, and 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 what's so what's so what's so what's so good about it? He says, we the uh, the God was took him took him from us because we listened to a lady. Mm -hmm. You still got this to lay to get back in. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Watch this. Mm -hmm. Let's go to John. Where's well, going, John? Second John, verse number one. All right. Okay. You got to, and everybody want to get back in the garden. You got to listen to the lady. Uh, <laughs> watch this. Watch this. John says in, 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 uh, 
this, 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 uh, this second John, the episode, the second episode of John. You got, you write that, brother. He says, "The elder unto the elect lady and her children." So if you if you want to get back in the garden, you got to listen to the lady. Yes. That's the good thing about it. We listen to the lady at first. It messed up. Yeah. But we got to listen to another lady to get back in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love that. You know how I know, you know, I know a lady in the same field, so we go back to the Genesis. I know he's talking about the lady. Watch this. Because the word he, he says, I know he, uh, he referred to Jesus Christ as an it. He, he, says, he, says, he, says, he says, in verse 15, he says, I will put Emma between you and the woman. Mm-hmm. Between... And between thy seed and her seed. And it says, It shall bruise the head. You know who you know who the lady is, right? Mm-hmm. It you know who it is. Mm-hmm. Let's go back to let's go to the feast. I'm telling you who the it is. I'm telling you who the it is. I'm showing sure the it. This is the it. We gotta listen to it, the lady. If you want to get back in. <laughs> and every time we sin, you gotta you gotta go to, you gotta go through the it. Yeah. To get back in. Yes. Sir. Every time. Let's go to uh, 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 the Ephesians. How's it go back this way? I'm sure the it. This is Paul writing to the simple church. I mean uh, the, uh, Ephesus, right to Ephesus. He said he told them that uh he says Best be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, mm-hmm. according according as He had chosen us in Him before the foundation of yes. the world. Yes. Watch this: that we should be holy and without bl- uh, uh, blame before Him in love, having predestined us. To the adoption of the children by Christ unto Himself, according to the to the good pleasure of His will, and praise of the glory of His grace, wherein He had made us accepted in the beloved. Mm-hmm. How is it by the blood? And he says, "This is this mystery." Having made known. Unto us, the apostles, mm-hmm. he made known to the apostles how everybody gonna get back in. Mm-hmm. And Paul says, <clears throat> "This is the mystery of his will, according to the good pleasure of his purpose in himself, that in the dispensation of time of the, in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he had might gather together all." In one, mm. in the lady, yeah. That's the it. first lady. That's it, bro. Paul says yeah, yeah. we are all accepted. That's it. You got to go through the lady to get back in. Yes. Amen. Amen. Well said, bro. Amen. God bless you. Good job. Good job. Uh, and that's why we members of the church. Uh, and that what Paul said in Galatians is the mother of us all, the holy city of Jerusalem. Good job, brother Jim. God bless you. I tell you, good job. Uh, I just wanted to say this on a lighter note, and it's a continuation of Sister Powers and Brother John's. Uh, I remember when uh, my sister, she's passed on now. Thank God she obeyed the gospel. Amen. She had come over. She was bringing a dinner to us, and she had brought me a meal, and she bought Anthony a pot roast dinner. I'll never forget this. And Anthony and uh, my sister, Cynthia, were very, very close, very close, talked all Amen. the time. And he, you know, she'd say, and he'd tell us scripture and teach, you know. But anyway, she brought this particular meal over. It was a pot roast. And she told, she said, she said, Anton, she said, I'm bringing you this. And she said, uh, uh, she came over, she brought it. She said, I got this for you because this is a man's meal. <laughs> now, anybody, well, some of you may not know, Anthony doesn't like soups and pot roasts and <laughs> stuff like that. Well, what it was was pot roast. And she's going to tell him this is a man's meal. Yeah. 
Anthony looked at her and he said, it may be a man's meal, but it's not going to be this man's meal. <laughs> I'll never forget that. I'll never forget. He said, it may be, but it won't be this man's meal. <laughs> and did not eat it. But, the, but he thanked her. But the bottom line that I wanted to get, it's a twofold message I get from the Garden of Eden. You know, as men... God has left the church in the hands of the men mm -hmm. and you have to man up and be all that God would have you to be. We think about it with Job when his wife said, what? Curse God and die. He said, you talk like a foolish woman. Mm -hmm. And that's what uh, Brother Johns is referring to about uh, you hear your wife to a point. Mm -hmm. But then we as women, we have a lot of good because when we think about God honored us, and that he brought Christ through us. Mm -hmm. He brought Christ through a woman is my point. Mm -hmm. So he honored woman because Christ could have come. God could have had Christ come in the world any kind of way. God is God all by himself. That's he right. could have been full grown. He could have just been a baby laying on the ground and just didn't come into the world. <laughs> but he chose to honor woman by bringing the Christ, his son, his dearly beloved son through woman. But what that lets us know too, so it's a twofold responsibility. Man, you man up. Be the man that God would be. Be the man in your house. And understand too that we as wives be compassionate on us and we as wives be su under subjection to our husbands. But I wanted to also say this. Uh, it was one last point I wanted to bring out. We've got to understand, too, as women, that we pack a lot of influence because that's what we see going on in our garden. Now, God told him specifically what to do, right? But he was influenced by his woman. Even with Abraham, you remember when Abraham lied? about his wife being his sister mm -hmm. you know and it's always and it's other episodes that we can see look how abigail beautiful smart abigail saved uh 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 what's david nabal that's right that's yeah. right you know and, yeah. and it was yeah. later okay. he was the yeah. Yeah. that's yeah. exactly right yes. that's exactly yeah. right yeah. so we have influence and we are to use yeah. our influence yeah. unto godliness mm -hmm. and we all know this so that God gets the honor. So see, the man got his part and the woman got her part. And we know this. We know this. But you know, as we study and, and the scriptures, the scriptures just come alive mm -hmm. and it just keeps reinforcing what we already know. Mm -hmm. And you know, that, that, that's what we need because we are sheep and we need to be retaught over and over again. Amen. Amen. Well said. Praise God. That is a blessing. And this is been uh, excellent uh, wisdom that has been shared uh, between us and we have addressed these particular uh, two which are some very very technical questions but we went straight to the book to address them and all Bible answers must be addressed that way but unfortunately a lot of people don't they will try to twist the meanings of word and as I say God has given us the original meanings of the text so men can't lie but we speak English you can win your argument with English and you can win your argument if they try to twist Greek and that's one thing I think we have to understand brother as we see our time is up it's 12 o'clock uh, we have to understand you can win your argument with English and don't ever let a brother try to lie because he's never going to find an English word that's going to contradict that Greek. He's not going to find it. Because it's there. The translator did his job. They can talk about uh, I've looked at, I haven't found one word yet that contradicts what the Greek says. It's just the brothers don't know all the meanings of the English word. Because he's going to a child's dictionary instead of a collegiate dictionary. Or a study dictionary. And I don't mean no Bible dictionary. I'm talking about a study dictionary that men use to know the vocabulary of whatever they're in. You don't even need a Bible dictionary because this word is not a Bible word. The word prove is English. Sincerity, that's not holy, that's a word. And you can be sincere and not be saved by being sincere in a point. So let's remember that, brethren, and understand. Whoop him with English and you still win. Whoop him with English and you still win. We got to remember that because when they talk about, I, I, I only refer to let you know, don't let them lie to you. But brethren, I'm telling you, when I'm talking, I don't speak Greek. And I don't speak Hebrew or child and all that. I speak English. And I'm telling you, I'm going to read this answer and I'm not going to look for agreement. I'm going to look for salvation at the end of my road from the Lord. 
Because agreement from man is a waste of your time. If he does agree, you both might be wrong still. Nevertheless, we understand that. So if I can, brethren, I want to ask the brothers before we go past the day, if I can. Uh, I've done this in a long time, but if I can get next Bible study, one more time we can address the rest of these questions. Because I want to make some points on how we're addressing them and why we're getting answers from the Bible. You can disagree with the answer, brother, but you can't validate the proof. Because lawfully, you must know what the word means and you prove it by the words before it and the words after. You can't lose it. You can't get the answer wrong. But you can lie on it and disagree with it. And start using words like revealed and God told me or whatever. But we still read in English. And that's where we're at. Brother Ham. Uh, next week we're supposed to be Lady Bible class. Okay, well we're going to postpone it and we'll put that off until another time. Because Lady Bible, we're not going to feel with that. And we've got our class now. So yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll postpone that to the next uh, appointed time. Thank you for reminding that, brother. God bless you. Yeah, and we'll go on with the ladies' Bible class and what we're supposed to do. So we want to keep in step with that. Yeah, we'll keep in step with that. Reason being because the ladies are prepared uh, information and, and it's coming up. And we, we, you know, we got time to talk about those questions. We're not going to lose them. So if your question wants to, it, it's here. I'm going to guard them like they money, believe me. And God knows that. So does anybody have another thought? Because our time is, is Sister uh, Hamilton, Sister Carl. No, I'm just wanting to read Luke 11 and verse 17. Okay. It's really, really fast. It okay. just says, But he, knowing their thoughts, said unto him, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, mm -hmm. and a house divided against a house falleth. But it's forward. It, you could read some more, but the Spirit, uh, I was just thinking of this through the Spirit, that we should remember these days when we are on one accord. So the days that we, we were not on one accord, we can remember that God's Word guided us. Amen. Well said. Well said. Praise God. And remember, brother, when we're on one accord, let's remember. All we got to do is read the same thing. Remember what Paul said. You read the same thing. You get my understanding what God revealed to me. There's no way we're going to read the revelation that Paul was received and come up with two different thoughts. Somebody lying. We can't do it. It's impossible. Yeah, I, Go ahead. Sister. I just wanted to say, and we know that no scriptures of any private interpretation. Yes. Scripture interprets scripture. Yes. So when you're looking at that subject matter, you have to look at other related scriptures. Yes. And scripture interprets scripture because you can't isolate scripture exactly. because then it can be misunderstood. Exactly. And I also wanted to say, will we continue to be able to put uh, questions in the Yes, please. Yes. Very well said. Yeah, put the questions. Uh, you know, each time we come in Sunday, we'll put them aside. Uh, we, we were addressing them at one time on Wednesdays. But remember, you know, everybody can't come on Wednesday. The larger group is here on Sunday. So that's why, you know, we, we haven't done it on Wednesday, but we uh, can go to uh, more or less with Sunday also. And so, I just wanted to say real quick, you know, this thought just came to me about the scriptures talk about if a man strive, let him strive lawfully. Amen. So when we're Amen. reading the scriptures, you know, make sure that we're using the Bible to prove, you know, what Amen. we're what we're saying. Right. And if we stay with the Bible, we'll get the right answer every time. Every time. The right, right answer every time. Amen. Boy, this is beautiful. Praise God. This is how every faithful church of Christ operates. Some are in battle, but they'll get it if they just stick with the book, like y'all said. So this is the end of our session. Uh, Brother Winfrey, can you give us a prayer to get us home, please, yeah. brother? Okay, let me get it. Oh, heavenly and holy and gracious and righteous and almighty Father, thank you, God, again for letting us be here to worship your spirit in the church. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for a wonderful Bible class. Thank you for the, the answers that you always have for us in your Bible. Continue to help us to go deeply into your Bible and continue to study and that we be able to go that narrow way that we be able to teach ourselves and help others to understand that are non-Christian even those that are Christian that are going the wrong way help us all Heavenly Father to be faithful unto you and to your word in amen. Jesus name I pray amen. amen amen God bless you my brother God bless you thank you all wonderful job wonderful answers from the book of God Hey, brother.